Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Andrew Rowe. I'm a cloud security engineer currently living and working in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, now my last video that I put out was kind of a general tech video on showing the differences between some non-technical and some technical roles that you can try to get into in cybersecurity. And I got a lot of great feedback as always, a lot of really, really good conversations with a lot of intelligent people. So I thank you for those conversations. But a lot of the feedback that I got was these videos are great, but you know, some a lot of the gap in the content that people are seeing is they don't really show you how to you know build your skills to get that first entry level position, which is all what we kind of want. Now, a lot of the videos that I see are the generic and you know, there's nothing wrong with them. I'm, I'm not saying that at all, but a lot of the videos that I see are the uh, a day in the life of the software engineer, how to get a job as a software engineer, and they really focus on a lot of the perks um, and high level requirements to get these kind of jobs, whether it's certification, schooling, um, and then on the other side, it's a lot of the perks of, you know, free coffees, uh, cool offices, things like this. But a lot of them don't show the necessary skills and uh, specifically soft skills that you might need in order to get your first role um, in an entry level position. So I wanted to make this video and possibly a video series about all the roles that you guys kind of bring up to me in terms of uh, entry level positions. This one being the cybersecurity analyst role. And I really want to dissect you know, some really generic job descriptions that I see and some high level skills that you can bring to a company that's going to help you um, give impact day one. So without further ado and without me rambling any further, let's hop right into the video. So since I'm a cloud security engineer, a lot of the questions that I get revolve around cybersecurity, even though I do a lot of you know, development and software engineering in my job and in my free time as well. But for people that want to get a role such as an analyst, there's going to be uh, a few skills that you can bring to the table, mainly soft skills that you can bring to the table that are going to help you have impact day one and really wow your employer on the interview that you're going to be going on. Now, most entry level positions in cybersecurity are going to be of that non-technical cloth. Whereas, you know, a lot of software engineering roles, all software engineering roles are obviously technical. You're going to have a technical interview when you go in. Um, you're going to have to, you know, solve a problem, solve an algorithm to get that job, as well as pass, you know, the soft skills test of do you work well with others and, and those kind of HR screening tests. But in cybersecurity, you can really leverage your soft skills in the beginning of interviews because not a lot of cybersecurity interviews are going to get that technical. Yes, they're going to ask you questions about vulnerabilities certain scenarios, but you're not really going to be pressed on your knowledge of, you know, coding, technologies, um, frameworks, things like this that you could actually falter on as someone that's trying to get an entry level position. So I'm going to actually link a job description I found right here. I'm going to just put a little snippet. So essentially what this job description right here is saying is you're going to have to work across teams to identify vulnerabilities and certain configuration issues that you can pass down requirements to those teams, say, you know, DevOps or software engineering or security engineering to then remediate those vulnerabilities. Now, if you don't understand what any of that means, essentially what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be finding holes in your own infrastructure, your own applications and things like that. And then you're going to be, you know, giving your own advice on how you would fix those, um, those holes or those vulnerabilities. And you're gonna be giving off, you know, kind of requirements and, and monitoring those vulnerabilities to make sure that no one's exploiting them. Now, what this means as an analyst is above all else, you're going to have to be able to understand, research and explain vulnerabilities at a very granular level. That should be kind of the base requirement for anyone trying to get into cybersecurity. I would say maybe not project managers, but, you know, anything from a CISO, uh, sysadmin, uh, security sysadmin, um, security engineers, obviously, anything like that. You're going to have to understand vulnerabilities and exploit uh, methodology to get into cybersecurity. If it's at a general level, that's fine, but preferably you wanna be able to talk about it at a granular level. Now the first soft skill outside of just researching vulnerabilities that you're gonna need, and it also kind of you know segues into a technical skill as well, is critical thinking. Now I know what you're thinking, no pun intended. This is so generic, Andrew, why would you tell us this? And I totally get that. Most videos are you know gonna tell you about, you have to be a critical thinker and all these kinds of things. But critical thinking is gonna be huge for you as a cybersecurity analyst because you're gonna to have to look at a lot of logs, a lot of you know monitoring solutions, whether it's a SIM tool, whether it's you know cloud native tools such as CloudWatch or Guard Duty or Security Guard or any of these things, and you're gonna to have to look at you know a lot of logs, but also a lot of alerts. 
And you're gonna have to really understand those alerts and those logs to know whether you should escalate something to say security engineer or even your CISO so he can bring in cross team or cross collaboration with other stakeholders. You're gonna really need to know at a fine tuned level what you should escalate and what you should you know pass off as just noise now a lot of the time security isn't the most welcome team to come into a meeting because usually when security comes into a meeting people think they did something wrong we got hacked or anything like that but if you gain a reputation within a company and you show critical thinking skills in your interview that you can be the kind of person that really can understand what's noise and what's you know something that needs to be escalated that could be serious you're going to gain a lot of respect, not only in your team, but in cross teams because teams have other teams have other work to do. Software engineers are very, very busy. They don't want to be called into a meeting all the time. Hey, we found this vulnerability. Someone's doing an Nmap scan against us, even though we don't even use that port. Those are the kinds of things that you should probably understand as a security analyst and be able to, you know, really dive into and be able to parse through those logs and know what's severe and what's not. Now, some tools that I use to enhance my critical thinking, obviously looking through a ton of logs and really knowing and understanding what you're looking at, but reading. Reading is something you can do outside of work that's really going to enhance your critical thinking. I love to read philosophy books, I love to read technical books, I love to read historical books. All of these things will bring a different light into your critical thinking. And what I mean by that is if you read a historical book, I like a lot of you know World War II warfare books, you're going to see how a commander or, or a private or, or something critically thought to get to a point where they made a good decision. And on the same token, if you're reading a technology book about, you know, new on the verge technologies or processes and technologies, you're going to see kind of a, a mindset that these people have in order to think critically. Now, another tool that you can use to enhance your critical thinking, and this might be a bit counterintuitive to the non-technical role, but hear me out. You're going to have to learn how to code, right? So when I say learn how to code, I mean understand code, try to code, do anything in the capacity of coding because coding makes you think deeply and makes you focus very, very deeply on what you're doing and think very critically on solving a problem. That's really going to enhance that function in your brain that's going to be in charge of critical thinking. And also if you can bring uh, knowledge of coding into a non-technical role such as a cybersecurity analyst you can not only automate your job using you know bash or python or anything like that but you can also have a leg up on the competition where a lot of cybersecurity analysts are going to come in and they're going to be non-technical they're going to be more focused on the research part of it but you can actually get yourself ahead a lot quicker if you come in already knowing how to code now you can code in any language you want to i think they're all you know kind of the same for this kind of skill in terms of critical thinking but some that I recommend are Bash, Python, like I said, or something is you know more development-based is JavaScript. It's used by almost any browser, so you're gonna be able to understand cross-site scripting, you're gonna be able to understand a lot of applications that you're gonna be working with with the software development team, and also it's just gonna really massage that critical thinking area of your brain and help you out a lot in the long run. Now the second skill that I wanna broach to you guys is communication. Again, another generic skill, but I don't think anyone's really talking about it in the same light that I'm about to. So as a cybersecurity analyst, when you're talking to you know, security engineers, you need to be able to talk in a certain light in a, in a more of a technical um, capacity. But then when you're talking to you know, CISOs, project managers, or other teams, maybe even HR, you're gonna, be able to, to need, you're gonna need to be able to talk to them in a more non-technical, more formal um, communication method. Also, when you're coming into these you know, meetings, you're most of the time gonna be bringing in vulnerabilities that you found that could be severe and you're gonna be able to, you're gonna to have to be able to explain them to not only CISOs and project managers so they can pull down requirements and you know, create cross team collaboration to remediate these requirements or these vulnerabilities, but you're gonna have to be able to talk to security engineers as well who are gonna be coding up or creating the solutions that are gonna mitigate those vulnerabilities. Like I said in the previous rule or the previous skill, a lot of the times the security team are the, are the team that brings the doom, so to speak, right? You're coming in, people automatically think you got hacked when security calls a meeting. So if you have excellent communication skills, not only will it help you in your interview explain and, and sell yourself in a really great light, but it'll also help other teams you know, respect you, um, not fear the security team in general, and therefore they're probably more likely to try to help you remediate something that, that you're worried about. Now the third skill that you're gonna to have to, or I think you're gonna to have to you know, sharpen is learning to align yourself against certain cybersecurity frameworks. 
Now, frameworks are huge in cybersecurity. You have FedRAMP Moderate, which is more of a government framework. You have you know, NIST CSF, NIST 853, which is more of a mid-level framework where it could be used by government uh, clients. It could also be used by you know, startups. It could be used by anyone. And then you have certain frameworks that are more cloud-based, such as like AWS CIS, which is more of a best practices benchmark. And that's one of the frameworks that I used at my first company or the company that I first started working at when I moved to Boulder is it was a really agile, small software startup. So they're not gonna use something like NIST 853 or, or definitely not FedRAM Moderate. They're gonna be using something where it's more best practices and not so rigid. Now frameworks are important because they essentially give you the requirements of all the automation, all the solution creation that the engineers are gonna be making it, and even yourself as an analyst. So when you create a solution, you don't just do it blindly, you do it against a framework, whether it's password policy requirements, whether it's monitoring and logging, whether it's you know certain kind of secure connections to VPNs or VPCs or, or anything like that. You do it against a framework. So if you have knowledge in the interview coming in of a framework, and I, I really recommend NIST 853, I think it's the most generic kind of general framework that a lot of companies use. But if you have knowledge of that kind of framework coming in, you're gonna have a serious leg up on the competition, especially in your interview, when that's most likely gonna be one of the questions that you're asked, what frameworks have you uh, used in the past? And if you're new to the field, you haven't used any, what frameworks are you familiar with? And if you can bring up NIST 853, and you know, say some examples as to how you would align against that framework, that's gonna really help you in your interview and really help you in the long run as you become a professional. Now, it could seem kind of vague aligning to a framework, right? So one of the examples that I would use when you're aligning to a framework is just check the password policy of that framework. You know, what kind of complexities do they have on the passwords? What kind of length? Um, how often can you reuse a password? And then figure out a way, you know, whether it's within the cloud or a specific, you know, library, how you would automate that yourself. And that would really wow your employers. For example, I created something using infrastructure as code, which essentially creates a password policy for every single account that we use. We have a lot of government clients, so a lot of them are on FedRAMP Moderate. Um, that was some simple automation that I wrote that essentially force every single account that we're you know in connection with to use this specific password policy that'll really show you know some initiative when you're coming into the field for the first time that you already know how to do something like this because a lot of employers don't expect you to know those kinds of things they just expect you to be well read on them so i really hope this video helped you guys gain a little bit more understanding of some certain skills that you can bring to the table on day one on your interview to you know really wow your employers or your future employers if you guys want me to jump into a more in-depth conversation on should you have school, you know, what certifications should you have, what kind of you know, coding programs can help you the most, uh, what kind of, you know, even certain things like Googling methods. That's one of the biggest things in cybersecurity is just knowing how to Google, trust me. Uh, but if you guys want me to hop into that in a different video, I'd be happy to do so. Just leave a comment down below and tell me you know, what you really want to see next. As always, I really appreciate you guys watching. Message me on Discord if you guys have any questions or if you guys just want to chat in general. I'm always open to it. Follow me on Twitter if you want to get updates on my next videos. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in the next one.